Hey, welcome out to the timber frame build today. I got some cool things to go through with you. We're gonna talk about the structural insulated panels. We call them SIP panels, but I wanna go through all the details with you on those panels, how they're made, what the components are, some of the benefits that we have for using them on a new build, and just show you how we go about installing them. So if you look behind me, above me, you can see these are the roof panels. You can see those are about 12 and a half inches thick and those have foam in the middle. We also have wall panels. Those are behind me as well. We got those already installed. You can see the screws that we put in them to fasten them. But let's start by looking at the basics with some sample panels that I have here this morning. So there's basically two components to a structural insulated panel. One of the components is OSB and you can see that is on both sides. So they have 7 16 OSB on both sides, and then in the center, they have foam. Different companies use different types of foam that get different R values, but on this panel, you can see that this is a wall panel. This is actually an R20. So this whole panel is a solid R20. So behind me, for example, this wall is a SIP panel wall. It's the same thickness as this. This is an R20. This is a continuous R20 all the way across. So that's a great benefit to use this because you don't have all the breaks, the thermal bridging from all the two by fours or two by sixes that you frame with. So that's one of the benefits for using these. So you can see this is a wall panel. Those are the components of that. The roof panels are made the same way, except for they have more R value. They have more foam in them. So let's go through some of the details on how to attach these how to connect them together. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is how do you attach these to another panel? So the panels that they make in the factory, they can come as large as eight foot by 24 foot. So they take the big cut OSB panels and they don't cut them down to the standard four by eight sheets that you're used to. They keep them giant size. So we can get as big of a panel as 24 by eight, depending on the use or the place. But once we get bigger than that, we gotta hook them together. So how do we hook them together? We got a few different options on how to hook them together. You can see that on this panel here, there's this foam and it's cut out and the OSB extends a little bit further. Well, that's in order to put a spline in there. And so the spline is just the term that we use that connects two panels together. Couple different options we have for splines are a simple two by six. So they, make these panels to fit a two by six in them. And if they cut out the foam three quarters on both sides, that allows us to put a two by six in here and they go in there like this. This one's cut out a little bit deeper than that, but if you can imagine that it was cut out three quarter, then you'd have something to nail to on both panels on either side. Well, the other way that they do it is if they don't need a structural value to it, so a two by six adds some structure to it. If they don't need the structure, they can actually use an insulated panel spline. So this spline is a way that we connect two panels together. This would be for a roof panel, but this is a way we can connect two roof panels together and still gain that insulation. So this here distance is the exact distance between the OSB on the outside of the panel. So this would slide in here. This is just an off cut panel so it doesn't have the recesses on either side. But if you can imagine, this would slide between two panels. The two panels would meet like this and you're able to nail off on both sides. So that's how we connect the two panels together. Okay, so let's talk about how we connect the panels to the actual structure of the house. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about wall panels. So we put down the deck like normal. So this is a standard deck. We actually have warm board on this house. So 
This is actually a warm board product. This is aluminum on top, but this can go down on any deck that you have. You can go three quarter inch regular plywood or whatever you have, you can set it right on top of there. So the first step is to use this sip seal. So this is a joint sealant. So it comes and you can run it out of the sausage gun. But what you do is you put a bead of this down on the subfloor. Now what that does is it adds an extra layer of air tightness so that no air can come under that bottom plate of the wall. So once we take that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that down on the bottom. So a nice bead of that. Then we're gonna take a two by six like this and we're gonna lay it down on the bottom plate or on the, the subfloor of the house. And we're gonna fasten that down. So that's glued and nailed to our subfloor. Then we can take our panels. So if this was the panel that was gonna go down on there, we could take this panel and we can take it and it will fit right down on both sides of that two by six. So anytime we have a wood to wood connection, meaning like uh, two by six to two by six or OSB to a two by six, we're gonna use this SIP seal. So we're gonna take this SIP seal before we put it down and go on both sides because that's a wood to wood connection. We're gonna go ahead and slide that down on there with that SIP seal and that's gonna be an airtight connection. Now the structure to these panels is the actual OSB. So we wanna set this OSB on something structural. The foam is just the insulation, the OSB is the structure. So it's important that we leave a little bit of our subfloor sticking past that two by six so that when you set it on there, the structure stands on top of that OSB or that subfloor material. So you can see how we would set this two by six in just a little bit there. Okay, so you got that set there. Now you're gonna go and connect the other panels to it. Now, once we get the walls built, then we have to consider how we're gonna attach the roof to the walls. So if you can imagine, this, this is just a sample again, but um, how would we attach the roof to it? So we would take another plate, like our top plate, and we're gonna glue both sides, and we're gonna slide that right in there. So now, when we go to set our roof on top of there, it sits on this plate and on these two pieces of OSB. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our SIP seal. We're gonna uh, put that on top of there and we're gonna take the roof panel and it's gonna come and sit down on top of there. So that would kind of be the assembly for that. Now, how do we attach it to the structure of the house? So the structure of this house is the timber frame. So we wanna attach this shell, these SIP panel shell pieces around that frame. So we got a couple different options on how to do that depending on the thickness of the panel. So these are the screws that we use. These are up to 18 inches long depending on the application and as low as eight or nine depending on the thickness of the panel. So we would take this and we would drive that screw all the way through there and that screw would go all the way through this panel and it will come down and it will go into this top plate. So you would nail this and then this would suck that top plate down into that glue. Now, if the wall panels are, are like this and say we have a timber on the inside, say there's a timber sitting right here, we're gonna do the same thing with these screws. We're gonna run these screws through that panel and into the timber on the inside of the house. So you can see over here, these are all specified by the manufacturer, 12 inch spacing, all these screws. We put this washer on it so that there's extra grab power because this screw is actually just going into the OSB. So we want as much grab power as we can to suck this together. So this is actually going through. There's a timber on the other side and those two are tight together. Now, when we get to different things like the roof coming together at the peak, we can use a non-structural connection of foam. So if you can imagine this roof panel is coming up to the peak, it would be cut on a plum cut and another panel going into it. Then we put spray foam in that joint and make that connection. It doesn't have to be structural, it just has to be insulated. So we can connect these two with spray foam up on the roof. Okay, 
Well, let's just go inside. I'm gonna show you a few details with the SIP panels, kind of show you how they go together, kind of think about like how the panels connect, some of the different ways that they go together. But let's go over to the side and we'll check that out. Okay, well this wall behind me is an entire SIP wall. And so you can see that each individual section is an individual panel. All these panels come from the manufacturer on semi trucks and they're all stacked in nice big stacks. And so they come individual. So like this is a panel, this is one. You can see that they're all labeled here as well. So each one of these is labeled for the wall. This is the D wall. This is panel number 12. And so each one of these panels come, it starts at one and goes to 13 or 14, and we put all those together. So we lay them down on the deck, we put our glue in there, our SIP seal joint sealing in there, we put them all together, nail them off, and then this whole wall is ready to stand up. We give all our rough openings to the manufacturer so they can pre-make all these rough openings to fit our windows. So there's no thinking involved besides finding a D panel and a number and putting them together and then everything comes together ready to go. We'll put our weather resistant barrier on the outside after all this is said and done. But this is how this wall goes together. It will be stood up by a crane and it goes together very simply like that. You can see we have hold downs on this house. These are integrated in. There's also um, extra lumber behind those to make sure that that all goes together correctly. But this whole wall would have gotten put together on the deck and then stood up. The other thing that they consider is some of these timbers here. So this is a decorative brace. And so behind this decorative brace, they've got special blocking in there for the support of that. So this manufacturer takes care of all that consideration. They put everything into those panels that we need. And then when we stand them up, they're all ready to go. They also cut all the roof panels on a CNC. So you can see all these roof panels, there was no cutting involved out on the job site. All they did was um, fly them in and put them in there, glue them and then screw them together. So that makes it pretty simple. It's a lot of work, but it's simple, not a much thinking, no, no cuts and all that stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed all the details that we put together on the SIP panels. We're gonna keep showing some more about the panels as we go along. We're not quite done with the whole project on the, on the panels. We got this last, last roof panel uh, system to put up on Monday, but we're gonna show some more details with that. Maybe put out some shorts, some interesting things to go with that. So thanks for coming out and we'll catch you next time.